On this episode of UTR, we're back in the most populated part of our great state. We'll board an actual mail boat, sing for some savory sauce, and taste some tradition that's oven baked. Then we storm Michigan's classic castle of comedy and hit a creative nook for kids' books. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Southeast Michigan my kind of place. 14 clubs. That's what they tell us a legal golf bag can hold. And while that leaves a little room for balls and tees, it doesn't leave room for much else. There's no room left for deadlines or conference calls, not a single pocket to hold the stress of the day or the to-do list of tomorrow. Only 14 clubs. Pick out the right one and drive it right down the middle of Pure Michigan. Your golf trip begins at Michigan.org. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is dedicated to enabling economic prosperity. The MEDC markets Michigan with a focus on growing businesses and building resilient communities in our state. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. Have you ever wondered why so many people live in Southeast Michigan? Well, it's simple. There's so much cool stuff to do here. <laughs> I figured that out all by myself. Yeah, I did. That's right. All kinds of people from all walks of life all decided that Southeast Michigan was the right place to live, work, play, start a business, and raise a family. And let's face it, that many people can't be wrong. From big city excitement and bountiful natural beauty to the life aquatic and foods for almost any appetite, this part of our great state is a mammoth melting pot of plenty. Speaking of plenty, we've got five more cool things to show you. So let's hit it, Southeast. Wait, actually, Jim, I think Southeast is back that way. For our first stop, we head to the one and only address that lives at zip code 48222, because this is the home of the J.W. Westcott, also simply known as the Mailboat. Yep, for well over a century now, this 45-footer has been the only boat delivering mail to these massive commercial vessels moving cargo up and down the Great Lakes. And those colossal carriers can't stop, so the mail is delivered as the ships are actually in motion. Think about it, if you work on a freighter, it could be weeks before your feet feel dry land. And if you need a letter, a parcel, or even some provisions, the J.W. Westcott is your only avenue. 150 years ago, John Ward Westcott had a dream. And today, Bill Redding is one of the proud captains that helped continue this proud family flotilla. How long have you guys had the contract though to deliver mail to the big freighters? Our postal contract began actually in 1895. 1895? Yeah. yeah. Now today we're delivering mail and packages to... This is a thousand foot freighter owned by uh, the Key Lakes Corporation. Right. What are they hauling? They are actually uh, hauling iron ore. How long have you been doing this? I have been at this myself. Uh, Actually, this is my 35th season. 35, so you've seen a lot. I've seen a few things over the time. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. How did you get your own zip code? Well, what the Postal Service decided years back was, what's the most efficient way that we can actually get mail to these guys, to the freighters? Yeah. The most efficient way, and that's when they came up with the idea of creating its own zip code. It's 48222, right? 48222, <laughs> yeah. But we are the only ones. That actually comes up next to a ship that's in motion. And actually, that's a, that's got to be a tough, yeah. dangerous dance to do, to come up next to one of these 1,000-foot freighters, and nobody stops, and you just, how does it work? Well, there will be a deckhand up on top of their deck, 
and they'll lower down a line, usually with a bucket attached to it, and we'll put whatever's going aboard in the bucket, or in this case, we'll tie the mailbag up to the line, then you'll see the deckhand actually pull it back on board. So there's a deckhand up there that's gonna... And now you can actually see the deckhand up on top, lowering the mail bucket down over the side. <laughs> this is amazing, look at that. There it goes, a little ways up there, eh? Oh my gosh, that's the coolest thing I ever saw. And you do this all the time? Does it ever get old? Every day, it never gets old. That's the unique thing about this job. And what if like a guy had to get off a ship and go to the airport or something? You guys can get a, somebody oh, off a ship? not a problem. Yeah. And take him to, okay. Yep, okay, awesome. just like the ship that we want to, if they had somebody coming off. You guys do a birthday party? My birthday's coming up. We do, that we was, do, we would, do. That would be a cool birthday party. Oh my God. You might have to supply your own cake, I'm not sure. That's okay. <laughs> Jim will buy me a cake. <laughs> uh, extraordinary experience. I wish everybody at home could, could actually be here to see this, except then, then there wouldn't be room for the mail. It is very unique, I will yeah. say. This was an experience I will not soon forget and probably one of the three coolest things I've ever done on this show. Being that close to a moving super freighter and watching these brave guys do what they do was absolutely amazing. Now I'm sure you've all heard the old US mail motto, neither rain nor sleet nor dark of night shall stay these couriers from swift completion of their appointed rounds. Well, now you can add currents, waves, and wakes to that list because while we're over here on dry land, no matter what the conditions are, the J.W. Westcott is out there delivering whatever these sailors need to get by. And for that, we can all be mighty Michigan proud. Now the gentleman you're about to meet is a bit of a renaissance man. I met him a couple of years ago and I thought, you know, this guy is so cool, I gotta have him on the show. But I thought maybe I should wait a couple years and see if I got any cooler so he wouldn't make me look so uncool. But since that didn't happen, let's get her done. I'm of course talking about the one and only Levi Johnson. Accomplished philosopher, musician, artist, writer, and strange as it may sound, the inventor of an all-purpose savory sauce that I quite frankly cannot get enough of. He also is one of the kindest and coolest cats you will ever encounter. Well, first I should mention that we're at the awesome Trenton Theater right downtown Trenton. And you guys are performing here tonight. Now, I want to take this conversation in, in sections, okay. in categories. What's your philosophy on life? Um, basically, to be humble. Um, I was taught to be thankful and to uh, treat people like you want to be treated. That's how I live. That's the, that's, <laughs> you know, I live by the golden rule. You, sure. you do the right thing and you treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah, and yeah. If, they can't, if you can't get along with them after you've done all that, then it's time to you know, part ways. Your art. Now, I, I read you were a good artist and I looked up some of your stuff, but I had no idea. Looking around me, the stuff that is on display here, I had no idea how talented you were. I like to take stuff and repurpose it. So this is, a lot of this stuff is found object art. So your, your artwork is, yeah, I'm so blown away at the, well, thank at you, the range that you work in. Like I said, the mixed mediums, you do everything very well. well you don't you. just do one art form very well. You are one heck of a singer and musician. Ah, thank I you, mean, <laughs> and I'm a musician. I know good singers and good musicians, so you've, I mean, and you're self-taught singer and musician? Well, I'm actually trained uh, in the Baptist from singing in church. That's where I got my training. And my wife is my greatest teacher. So the guys that you heard, uh, those are guys that I picked for my band, Pearl Handle Necktie. I need people who are better than me to make me shine. Okay. Now for the real reason you're here. Ah, <laughs> drum roll. <laughs> Are you a trained chef? Because the soul sauce, it's the mighty fine soul sauce that you make. I am hooked. My grandfather was a pit master <laughs> in Tennessee. In Tennessee. And people sought him out for his cooking skills and for the sauce that he made. Yes. I thought you were a trained chef. I thought, I mean, to no, come up with I a sauce just, like I this. No, I was around great cooks. Uh, I'll try a lot of things. Uh, you know, I got cookbooks that, uh, you know, I go off on a tangent and try stuff. And um, 
You know, it's, it's, that's something that draws us together like music. Yeah. You know, food and music, everybody loves. Uh, Last question. Okay. Are you bad at anything? Yes. Math. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough talking about how cool this guy is. It was time. So the band turned it up, Levi once again hit the stage, and we all got down to some uplifting and soulful music. I'm telling you, these guys can really play and it made for a fun and exciting end to a long and rewarding production day. If there's one thing you can take away from meeting Levi Johnson, is that there's a creative person inside of all of us trying to get out. Another thing you might want to take away is a bottle of his soul sauce. I took away a couple. Bonus. Now, if you're Italian, you know that food is life and family is everything. Well, here's a family that made food their life and everything they make is delizioso. How is that? Eh. Uh, darn it. This is Bomarito's Bakery in St. Clair Shores. Or to be more precise, Jim Bomarito's Dolceria Palermo, where since the 1920s, people have been coming for fresh, authentic Italian baked goods, sandwiches, and a whole lot more. Absolutely nothing here has changed. Everything is as it should be because Christine and her two sisters, Grace and Rosie, keep their grandpa's legacy alive with love and lots and lots of Italian treats. Just ask Christine. Ever since we got here, people have been coming and saying, oh yeah, I've been coming here 35 years. Oh, I've been coming here four years. I've been coming here 25 years. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. These people are wonderful people. Places like this add heart and soul to a neighborhood, they really do. And just so you know, cannolis are the epicenter of the dessert universe. Um, Hi, nice lady, go ahead, we're just filming. Oh, hello, <laughs> now, now how long have you been a customer here? Oh, God. 30 years, 30 years, 30 years, 30 years yeah. <laughs> Oh, thanks a lot. So anyway, <laughs> hey lady, we're working here. <laughs> so, so anyway, and I can tell when people come in here that they love you guys and you love them back. We do. I mean. We're blessed. Yeah. They, you know, so many of our friends, they're just not customers. They, they're friends. They, this has been in your family since what, the 1920s? You guys have been doing Yeah, my grandpa, he, brought, he actually had a store in Cadillac and Forest in 25, 1925. This store has been here come March 6th. Yeah. It'll be 61 years. So we're so much a part of this community. I mean, well, on a personal, emotional level, what does that mean to you to be carrying on your families? Oh my God, pride. Oh my God, I just, I, I, I love our customers. I love the people that work for us. They're family. We don't, we don't say, hey, sh Paula works for us. Paula works with us. We're a team. I mean, there's nothing I asked Paula to do that I wouldn't do. I mean, we love each other, you yeah. know? And our customers, I can't express, I mean, the pride. I think about my mom and dad, and my grandma and grandpa, and I think, oh God, you know, just, yeah. I, I want to make them proud, and always give glory to God. We've been we've been wanting to come here for a long time. People have been telling me about this place Cafe, that's, for now. That warms my heart. And not just, not just Italians from Italy, I mean, a lot of people have been telling me about this place. Thank you, that's, so. that's, that's a nice thing. I mean, it just, you know, we just, I, I think about my parents, and I think, hey, we're doing something right still, you know, thank you, you know? Yeah, your grandpa would be Our proud. Our ethics are from them, yeah. you know? Yeah. We're hard working. So you guys, what all you guys make, sandwiches, you go, go through the list of what you guys do. Okay, we, cannolis are our, that's the Cadillac of the bakery. Bless you. Our cannolis. Cream puffs, we do, our bread is incredibly good. I mean, oh my gosh. People come from all over, just for a loaf of bread. They'll come in and they'll wait, you know, half an hour for a loaf of bread, because it's really good. Yeah. Um, our subs are known all over. Yeah. Our buffalettas, our pizzas are awesome. You know, our pastries are great. I mean, my grandpa's, all the recipes here for cookies are my grandpa's with the exception of six cookies. Wow. We have like an M&M because people ask for their children to have an M&M cookie. Yeah. There's some oatmeal raisin, yada, yada. But the majority of the cookies are all my grandpa's original recipes. And they're, they're good. And you got a lot of wine. Mm, a lot of wine. I yes. love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it from me and Christine but now you're gonna hear it from a bunch of folks who frequent Bomberitos. So what brings you to Bomberitos? Bomberitos, 91 years of Italian 
big boots. You know what? They're an East Side institution. They have the best pepperoni rolls and mochiletta ever. So what brings you to Bomberitos? What's your favorite thing here? Probably the cannolis. Yeah. The girls that work the counters, they love us. You can tell. Yes, you are. Thank you so much. Yep, people love this place because of all the love that comes out of it. And do Christine, Rosie, and Grace get along? <laughs> what do you think? Who's the smartest? I am. And smart? <laughs> Who works the hardest? Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who loves their customers the most? Me. Okay. This precious and unpretentious place is a true UTR food find. And these three sisters genuinely personify their family's passion for both this bakery and their loyal, loving customers. If you want a true taste of Italian dedication and pride, all wrapped up in some fresh bread or piped into a crispy cannoli shell, get your buns to Bomberito's Bakery. Hey, come to think of it, they make those too. Yeah. Now they say that laughter is really, really healthy. It releases endorphins and all kinds of really good brain chemicals. And if that's true, this next guy, we all owe him a lot. More than 40 years ago, Mark Ridley had a dream. Only his dream came with a punchline. Well, actually millions of them, because way back in 1979, he opened the one and only comedy castle in Royal Oak. Now it's one of the country's premier comedy hotspots, where on any given day, you'll see everything from a young aspiring soon to be, to some of the most established giants in the business. Now this, the Comedy Castle is the, it was the first comedy club in Michigan, right? Yes, yep. January 4th, 1979, I had nine local acts, one of which was Dave Coulier and the other one was Tim Allen. They both started with me at that time. I was gonna ask you, who all has come through these doors? I mean, oh. I know Tim Allen. I mean, you know, Seinfeld, Jay Leno, Ellen, Rosie. I mean, you know, where you can just say the first name. People know <laughs> Drew Carey, uh, Kevin James. So everybody that's in the comedy business, comedy world, has pretty much come through here. Yeah, like I said before, I've been here many, many times. And every time I've been, I've had a, an amazing time. Good. Is it, is it tough running a comedy club? Because it's, it seems like it's all laughs, but I mean, well, from hecklers to, I mean, what's it like? Well, there, there's a reason they call it show business. You know, it's behind the scenes. Right. It's, um, you know, it's, you have to negotiate with agents and or the comedians or the managers. You have right. to make sure they get here on time. I mean, you know, I've over the years, I've had something happen in the 11th hour where you have to scramble and try and find somebody. And yeah, hecklers aren't really as bad as they used to be. Right. Um, you know, the biggest thing is just just trying to make sure you're, you're, you're hitting all the right buttons for everybody. Because sometimes you'll get an act in here that maybe appeals to 20% of your crowd. And that's happened in the past to me. So that's why we put up videos on our website so people have an idea of what, what's going on. That's a great idea. What I love about the Comedy Castle is you can come up here, open, open mic night, and see like you know people just starting out. Yeah. And you can see some of the biggest names in the business. Yeah. Uh, your walk of fame out there, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it's and there's still more to go up there. I mean, and I see a lot of that. They come here once or twice and then boom, they've exploded. Right. So, And you mentioned you do classes here? Yes, yep. Bill Bouchard teaches our um, beginners class and Joel Fragamenti teaches our advanced class. So yeah. you can come here and just laugh or come here and learn how to make other people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people out there that, hey, I've been told I'm really funny. And then, <laughs> you know, okay, well, let's see, how you, let's see how you do. And, you know, once in a while you get a pearl. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I understand tonight is... Open it, mic night. It's open mic night. Yeah. So if you let me go on, if I'm not fantastic, I'll mop the floors for you. You got it. So if you're looking for a way to get healthy, skip the gym and spend an awesome evening laughing with friends or that special someone at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. And who knows, you just might catch the next rising star. Or maybe a mediocre meteor plummeting towards the earth. Hey Mark, where do you keep the mop? In the back by the furnace, Tom. Gotcha. My mom thought it was funny. 
Now they say reading is fundamental. Well, we found a children's bookstore in Gross Point that put the word fun in fundamental. Oh, what's an L? She knows. Coriander's Children's Bookshop on Kerchival is a place that would do Harry Potter proud. It's fun, imaginative, and chock full of reading materials that will inspire young minds. Now, before I read more into this story than I know about, I thought I'd better check in with Sherry Cotton. Okay, Sherry with one R. There are bookstores, then there are bookstores, and then there are bookstores, and then there's this place. Did you get permission from Hogwarts to open this? <laughs> I mean, it's magical when you walk in here. It's not just a bookstore. What was your inspiration? I wanted to open a bookstore probably most of my life. When we went with the children's bookstore, we wanted to make it the best children's bookstore ever. And so we just started throwing ideas out. Um, we had our designers come in and we had this artist who painted the pictures on the wall. We all came up with our favorite book stories and our, he just kind of put them all together. Well, first of all, when ki little kids come in this place, you must get such a kick out of their jaws dropping and their eyes getting wide because it's like you walked into a Harry Potter book. And, so, and one person painted the mural on yes. this entire yes. wall? Yes, he's an amazing artist. He's done other work for us in the past and uh, when I heard he was going to do it, I, I just knew it was going to be this outstanding. He did a, a fabulous job. Well, hooks are so, I mean, they're so important, especially yes. for kids. Yes. And you plan to have programs here where you're going to have movie nights for kids where parents yes. can come by and right. say, here, little Bobby, read him a story. We're going to a movie and to dinner. Yes, and, yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And your courtyard. I yes. mean, what a special place yes. to just sit and reflect and read with your, with your child. So we opened in September. The weather was still amazing. There were always people out there. One little boy was out there reading a book, and I, it just it's, it's makes this all worthwhile. Well, what you've done is you've, you've created a fun and educational and whimsical destination. I mean, it's not just like, come on, we're going to the bookstore. It's like, come on, we're going to Never Never Land, and we're going to read books, and we're going to have fun. I mean, it's, yeah, I feel like a kid just walking in here. I always say if you want to learn about the community you're in, go to an independent bookstore because that reflects the imagination, the intellect, the I mean, of the yes. people there. Yes. So thanks for letting your inner child out and sharing it with all of us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And You're going to cry, aren't you? I am. <laughs> I knew it. First I, one I, this I, week. <laughs> <laughs> if you love your kids and you want to give their brains a big hug, Cart them over to Coriander's Children's Bookshop in Gross Point. It's a place that will entertain, inspire, and help develop strong and creative minds. And if you want to give yourself a big hug, head over to Southeast Michigan and meet the millions who live here. I guarantee they'll show you a good time. Heck, even I live here. But don't hold that against them. Hey everybody, I'm really excited because we have a brand new web series called Michigan Road Trip Adventures where you can see cool people, places and things that you can't even see on the TV show. Take a look. So this is a 2.5 acre garden made up of 15 individual beds, a rain garden and a wetlands area and it incorporates 32,000 plants and grasses and 48,000 bulbs. Yeah, and, and if you don't know who Pete Udolph is, he's a world-renowned famous garden designer. He's, he's designed famous gardens in New York, in Manhattan, in Chicago. And what he does is he designs these incredible green spaces that don't look like they've been designed. They look natural. And that is why he is the rock star garden designer in the world today. He has redefined gardening as it is and he's a big proponent of what's called the Dutch wave or the new perennial movement. Belle Isle, what a jewel this island is. So he picked the site and Pete Uldolf loves Detroit. So if you want to see more cool stuff like that, come join us at utrmichigan.com. That's utrmichigan.com and pack your bags. 
14 clubs. That's what they tell us a legal golf bag can hold. And while that leaves a little room for balls and tees, it doesn't leave room for much else. There's no room left for deadlines or conference calls, not a single pocket to hold the stress of the day or the to-do list of tomorrow. Only 14 clubs. Pick out the right one and drive it right down the middle of Pure Michigan. Your golf trip begins at Michigan.org. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is dedicated to enabling economic prosperity. The MEDC markets Michigan with a focus on growing businesses and building resilient communities in our state. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. 